Hello, hello, everyone. Here we are, Gerald Salenti and the judge on December 22nd, three days before Christmas, to talk about what in the world is going on uh, legally, uh, rights of our Constitution, what the future looks like, and again, what we can do about it to try to change it in a direction that would make it a very happy new year, as well as a Merry Christmas, because it's silent night, silent night, all's not calm, all's not bright, because they have really, really have taken the joy out of this Christmas season, scaring everybody. But I'll tell you, Judge, with my espresso, with my water, <laughs> look at this. Look at this panettone. Oh, my. Yep. And this is a real good one. Oh, Baduco. Maybe, maybe and, I'll get to taste a slice of that tomorrow. And this is the classic one. And you know who brought it to me? My cousin Vinny. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I have a cousin Vinny and my beautiful, lovely cousin Lisa. They oh, came up last weekend and brought me this beautiful panettone. So it's time to celebrate Christmas. And, and you just had to put that panettone and the fresh ground espresso in my face this morning. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that was part of the great part of being an Italian, you know? Right. So, Judge, it's Christmas time. And uh, the government is uh, telling us what Christmas should be. And tell us more about that. So I wrote a piece... Uh, which comes out tonight at midnight called Christmas in America. You know, the government hates the concept of Christmas. The government hates the concept of God. The government hates the concept of natural rights because all of those things are superior to the government and the government can't change them. So if our rights come from our humanity rather than from the government as God, then the government can't take those rights away absent a jury trial at which it proves fault. It can't take them away by edict. Even though your right to walk in the street, your right to control your face are natural human rights given to us by God, the son of whose birthday we celebrate on Saturday. And the government doesn't like that because it can't control it. That's the essence of my piece, Christmas in America. There's a lot of uh, Catholic imagery in there, but my beef is that there is a God and it's not the government. However, to half the country, Gerald, and everybody listening to us, half, they are dependent on the government. They either work for local, regional, county, state, or federal, or they receive a welfare benefit from the government. So the government has succeeded in creating a dependency in half of Americans. Do you think those people are going to challenge the government? Of course not. Wow, that's really something what you just said. I, mean, I had no idea. That many, of course, they're in total control. You also write here and you say, what if after Jesus died, he rose from the dead? What if he was murdered by government because it feared a revolt if it did not eliminate him. Well, he taught that you can't go to heaven without human freedom and that you can't be charitable, humble, or selfless without human freedom. And the government feared those teachings. Now, it was egged on by the Jews who, who, who thought that he had blasphemed, but the Romans willingly executed him because they feared this message of freedom. It wasn't a message of obedience to the government. It was a message of freedom. And that message of freedom is being stolen from us now. Of You're course. censored. You're censored for saying anything about freedom. We may be taken off the air for this. You're not allowed to have freedom. There is no freedom of speech. There is no freedom of thought. I am a head of the big tech. I will right. tell you what freedom is. I am the head of government. This is science. You have no freedom to think for yourself. It's illegal. You know, we have been doing these podcasts, and, and I think the people that watch us know that you and I are dear friends, and we've been doing these podcasts, I, I think, since November. Two months ago. Yep. 
we have less freedom today, three days before Christmas, than we did two days after Halloween <laughs> because of the edicts that have been reissued. And, and here's what troubles me even more, Gerald, and everybody listening to us. I expect a liberal Democratic governor like Governor Hochul of New York or Governor Murphy of New Jersey to issue these edicts. It's, it's, it's genetic. It's just in their, in their bloodstream. I do not expect that the people will roll over and play dead and comply with them. That's what troubles me more than anything. I expect a big government authoritarian to be a big government authoritarian, but I want Americans not to be sheep. I want them to resist edicts that are illegal, that are in their face, that tamper with their inalienable God-given rights that the government tries to take away without due process just by issuing a piece of paper. Yeah, but you said it. Half of them are dependent upon the government. Yes. So they become the government slaves. Yes. Yes, you and know, the government, and the government, look at what Biden wants to pass. I mean, uh, the Wall Street Journal had an editorial yesterday saying Senator Manchin had saved the Democratic Party. Senator Manchin may be saving the country because this build back better thing, they're going to borrow another two and a half trillion dollars and enhance the size of the people that are dependent upon them. This is the way government works, and it doesn't matter if you're a Republican or a Democrat. Take from those who have, give to those who don't, and those who don't will become dependent upon you. And in every age, no matter who's in the White House, they give away more and more and more. The, the, the Biden numbers are staggering because they're the largest. Whoever succeeds Biden, the numbers will be even larger unless we can change this system. And it's just, it has to be changed. And I want to stay on this, what you said, though, about My, uh, what, what if he died, he rose from the dead, he was murdered by the government because it feared revolt if it did not eliminate him. How about, how about who did he make a whip? And people say to me, you know, Salenti, you become angry. I said, well, yeah, I'm angry. You're right. I'm angry when my rights are stolen from me. I'm angry when somebody tries to take my life away from me. But Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, became violent, made a whip to drive the money changers out of the temple. It was oh, you the... mean J.P. Morgan Chase? Yes. No, maybe it was Goldman Sachs. Uh, I think it was um, maybe Morgan Stanley. Gerald, I think you're... maybe Wells Fargo could have been Citibank. Oh, and what happens after that? Woof. Three days later, he's on the cross. You read my mind. It was, it was the central bankers of that era. Yep. And he did become violent. At one point, he said, I have not come to bring peace. I have come to bring the sword. Because the people who will take your freedom will only stop when you have a sword. At one point, he said, sell your tunic and buy a sword. Yeah. Look, the devil can quote scripture to suit his purposes. You can pick any one liner out at any, any time you want. But the point is, he was a man. He was the son of God. He was preaching freedom, but he was a realist. Yes. And when he formed that whip and threw those banksters of that era out of the temple, well, what they were doing was they were charging people more money than they should have to enter the temple. Yeah. They were converting um, property into coins and they were taking a vig for themselves and they were robbing the people blind. Just like they're doing today. Yes. You know, yeah. then you go on and you have here, and you, you touched on this. What if the acceptance of the government as God has ruined individual initiative, destroyed personal work ethic, fostered cancerous laziness, enhanced deep poverty, and impelled thoughtless obedience to the government in those who have accepted it. What if the blind acceptance of the government as God chills the exercise of personal freedom for fear of the loss of the government, government's, what do you, what do you call it? Mun, mun, munificence. Munif well, what is the it? government claims that it's munificent, that it's generously giving away money. The government doesn't have a nickel. The government's giving away money that it either printed or took from us. No, you're wrong. 
It says it right here in today's Wall Street Journal. <laughs> U.S. to disperse 500 million COVID test kits. So they have the money. They have it there. Oh, but wait a minute. You forgot the two most important words. 500 million COVID test kits for free. Oh, for free. That's right. <laughs> so they have all the money they want. 500 yeah. million. What, what is this money? How much is this worth? $7.5 billion. At 15, 15 bucks a kid. At 15 bucks a kid is the low end, by the yeah. way. So it's probably a little more than that. So could you imagine wasting that money? Oh, but hey, it went to the, it pro, it went to the drug dealers who sell them the, the, the kits. So maybe his buddies made a lot of money on this because bullshit Biden took $1 million dollars from Pfizer, the drug lords, to celebrate his inauguration. And that was the maximum amount they were allowed to give. One million dollars shoved in Biden's pockets to celebrate his inauguration by the drug dealers that are selling this. So how many, who, what companies does this come from? How much, quote, Campaign contributions that they give. What a moronic word, campaign contributions. How about bribes and payoffs? Right. How about right. wait? Oh, oh, now, now you got these test kits. And again, as we've detailed in the Trends Journal, how ineffective they are and how they give up false positives and on and on and on and what the, the rate is and it shouldn't be. But beyond that, now it'll freak everybody out. <gasps> oh. I was tested positive. Oh, I was tested. Yeah, but you could be asymptomatic. Get him nothing. Correct. No, but I'm going to freak out now. Oh, and by the way, talking about freakouts, here's a freak out for you. This guy over here, Danny Myers, Union Square Hospitality Group. What did he do? Requires boosters for workers and diners. Who the hell are you, you little piece of arrogant crap? Who the hell are you? Everybody should boycott this guy. Yes. Oh, the boosters? Hey, hey, dumbbell. Hey, dumbbell. Check it out. Wow. They just closed down Cornell, NYU, Columbia. I want oh, because the students, 98% of them that have been double vaxxed were tested positive. Unbelievable. I want to go back to the uh, 500 million test kits at seven and a half billion dollars. The Constitution says no money shall be drawn from the public treasury except in accordance wow. with law. Wow. And law requires that Congress vote on it. Did the Congress vote to spend seven and a half billion dollars? Of course not. The president's doing it on his own. Do you hear a single objection from Congress, which is not in session now, they're home for the Christmas break? You do not. So again, not only is the president issuing edicts, and I know we're gonna talk about the Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals upholding the Department of Labor edict, not only is he writing laws unconstitutionally, and it's not just Biden, they all did this, but Biden's doing it to extreme. Not only is he writing laws unconstitutionally, he's spending money unconstitutionally. Yeah. None of this is consistent with the Constitution, and you don't hear a peep from the Congress whose powers he's usurped. Somebody will challenge it, and who knows what the courts will do. Look at what happened to the challenge to the OSHA regulations. OSHA issued a decree, if you employ 100 or more people, they have to be vaccinated, fully vaccinated, meaning two or three shots, and they have to be tested each week. And we OSHA are going to come on your property to make sure this is done. Now, where do they come up with the 100? Because more Americans are employed by employers who employ 99 or fewer employees than are employed by employers who employ 100 or more employees. So how much, how bad of an emergency can this be? The federal judge in Texas upheld it. The United States Court of Appeals for the Fifth Circuit, which covers Mississippi, uh, Louisiana, and Texas, invalidated it. While they invalidated it, 10 or 15 other uh, challenges were filed. 
The Chief Justice of the United States, John Roberts, consolidated all the cases before one court, the Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals in Cincinnati. They upheld it two days ago by a vote of two to one. So now you have the Fifth Circuit, Texas, saying no. The Sixth Circuit, Ohio, saying yes. Obviously, this is going to go to the Supreme Court. They appealed it to Justice Kavanaugh, who didn't rule on it. He ordered the government to respond to the appeal. Supreme Court's going to say green light or red light on this probably in the next week. And what do you think it's going to go? I think they're going to invalidate it. I think they're going to invalidate it by a vote of five to four with the chief justice siding with the liberals and the conservatives saying this is overreach. The president can't write the laws and the, and the government can't come onto your property. And by the way, I have to say to your listeners who are employers of 100 or more people, if the government comes knocking, asking to come onto your property to look at the medical records of your employees, ask the person who's doing the knocking, where is your warrant? And when they don't have a warrant and they won't have one, close the door and lock it. Good. Judge, what you have just told the people today in this short amount of time, you don't hear anywhere else. What you just said now, what you just said about spending, what was it, 7.5? Seven and a half billion without an authorization by Congress. Yeah. Nobody's saying this. And yet everybody's <laughs> applauding this. And again, what they're missing here is how they're freaking everybody out with this Omicron scare. Oh, somebody died in Texas. One person. One person, I'm, only out of 333 million. Right. I'm sorry that person died. Yeah, you never I'm died, sorry by their, the way. to their family at Christmas time. But yeah, that, is never, not a reason, that is not a reason to destroy the Constitution. And when you read the details about this, the guy had pre-existing comorbidities, as do 94, excuse me, yeah, 94.6% of the people that have died from COVID had 2.6 pre-existing comorbidities, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. 78% of those hospitalized <laughs> are either obese or overweight. But they're selling now the fear, and again, you got this clown guy, this arrogant little boy, Danny Myers, telling people, you must get booster shots. Hey, hey, Remember when they sold this thing that, hey, don't worry about it. Two shots, 96% efficacy rate. Remember that? Oh, Manhattan, 80% double vaxxed. Remember Fauci, fat mouth spewing out his crap? 70%, you'll get herd immunity. How come nobody talks about this anymore? Well, look at what's going on in Israel as we speak. A fourth shot. Fourth shot. How many shots do the, does the government have to authorize an order before we realize that natural immunity is the best immunity and this stuff is a farce? Now, I respect you deeply, but when you say anything natural, I have to disagree with you. Nature is not allowed. Natural is not allowed. <laughs> No, no, only, only what the drug dealers say is allowed. We'll call that science. Well, we talked earlier about how the government hates the concept of nature because it can't control it. That's right. So when Jefferson wrote in the Declaration of Independence that our rights are inalienable because they come from nature or nature's God, using his uh, phrase, that's a federal law because Congress adopted it unanimously. And everyone who works for any government has taken an oath to uphold that law. And obviously they don't uphold it because they don't believe it because they think that our rights come from the government. Why? Because nature is superior to the government and the government can't control it, so they want to ignore it. Yeah. Judge, what you have to say, what you give to the people, thank you so much. You're so generous. You're so uh, intelligent. And, and the wisdom that you have is, is like you can't find anywhere else in, in the expressing it the way you do. So thank you so much for coming on. And I want to wish you a Bon Natale and uh, Feliciano Nuovo.
There you Happy go. Happy New Year, and thank you for all that you do, all that you give, and how many people you help by doing what you do. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. To you, Gerald, and to the wonderful people watching and listening to us as well.